Can you believe this is North Carolina in April? So yesterday was April Fools. I think today is really April Fools because it's April and it's snowing. But it's been like springtime here for a good month or more. Um, but all of a sudden it decided to uh, snow and then tomorrow is supposed to be like 70. So I have um, our family coming into town, my grandmother and my aunt, so excited, are coming into town this weekend. So we have a big weekend planned. On top of that, I have to work like every day. Um, so get a lot of stuff done, but like Jenny, as always, I have a lot coming up and I'm gonna do some more. So I found this fabric store in Gastonia, which is way south of the city, past the airport. Um, and I, I I was amazed. I went to, there's a place called Mary Jo's, who used to be the big, biggest fabric store in the area. I went, I hadn't been in a very long time, and you could tell because they've completely redone their store, and now they only have upholstery fabric, which was their big money-making thing, and um, a little bit of wedding dress stuff. So the store that I would go to to find a lot of different options or things that weren't in my local um, fabric stores, now is not an option. So I was all like sad and depressed, and uh, the lady said, well, down the street, there's a place called So Much Fun, S-E-W, Much Fun. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll check it out, but the sign looked kind of 80s, so I was like, I saw it from the highway, but it looked like a little, the sign looked a little 80s, so I was like, eh, whatever. I went down there, it's the most amazing store in the whole world. So I blew a ton of cash, and then I told my sister and my mom about it, and Megan wanted to go today, so I kind of went through... Uh, my fabric stockpiles. I've been putting them in um, these containers. They're just dollar store Rubbermaid containers, but that way I can see everything. I'm trying to do um, color order. So like here's my, my greens and my blues. Um, obviously I'll have to get a lot more of these containers. Um, I'm trying to organize here. I'm trying to put them also by different projects. All my fleece is in there. Um, kid stuff and then down here is all like wearable fabrics so cottons knits stretchy blends things like that that I can't quilt with but all my bigger quilting stuff is either in categories um, color or then kind of my mix of everything in here my project that I'm trying to all right so I have a whole list of everything that I need the, mer the highlighted is what I need to get at the store. Um, well, and then I'm going through all of my scrap fabric to see if there's anything on this list that I need that I can, um, I have in my scrap fabric and then I'm not wasting money and um, time. Ooh, Fancy Forest by Elizabeth Hartman. I love, love, love her quilts. I'm also gonna work on her beehive one, um, but that's kind of a later project. This, okay, I bought this um, pattern and book probably a year and a half ago. This is kind of like my dream pattern when you get good enough. Megan and I did the unicorns and I think I'm ready for this. This is gonna be definitely a big, long, extended project. But pretty much the large quilt is pretty much four of these. And then they just are in a different um, different setup. I'm not, I don't want to show the whole thing. But see, she just moves it around so it looks different. So it's not, this flower isn't always in the same location. It looks around so it looks much more complicated than it is. Um, it's still going to be complicated. So I'm definitely going to have Megan's help. But if we do it um, square by square, I think we'll be okay. The thing is, I want to do it rainbow, kind of like how it is on here. Um, slightly different. She doesn't have really, like, yellows in here. I want to add some yellow towards the middle. And then um, up towards the top, it's a little gray, and I wanted it more purple. I actually have a lot of really beautiful purples left over from the unicorn that we did. Same Elizabeth Hartnett pattern. We did the pillows for Megan's birthday. Um, the reason we didn't do the quilt is I just didn't feel like we would use it um, all that much, but... This is like right up on my alley. I could use this in the bus. I could use it in my bedroom. Like we're outdoorsy woodland people. The same thing with the bees. I'm a beekeeper. I think that would be a really pretty one to do, um, to have around. So I'm gonna go through here, try to see what I can use. And then we're going to the fabric store today. So excited. I'm also probably gonna do a second metamorphic dress. The one that we made, love it. It's too big. I feel it's supposed to be an oversized dress, but I feel like it's bigger and makes me look bigger. 
than what an oversized dress is supposed to be. Um, that happens a lot when you do patterns, is you make it and you're like, oh, I'm a size 10 or I'm a size 12, and then you make it and it's really like a 14 or 16. So, um, we, my dress that I made that was supposed to be smaller, would probably fit Megan, hers, we even took a whole bunch in on the sides and then we still felt it like it was too big. And if we took more in on the sides, it would completely ruin the design of the dress. So we're just going to make new ones and then, um, either hopefully find a good home for those other metamorphic dress because you spend a lot of money and you spend a lot of time and even though we did the measurements it still came out way too big so we're going to try that again so i'm just going to walk you through how i'm going to organize this um so you can buy a very specific color palette to come out exactly like this but if you go on instagram or if you go on um you know pinterest or anything so many people have done this quilt so many different ways and it is absolutely gorgeous um uh, so i'm changing a little bit of the colors i want to do more of a rainbow i want to put some more yellows throughout here and then some more purples up tops before we hit like all this all this gray i want the, that to be kind of in the corner i want purples blues greens yellow orange red um so i've broken down as I've gone through the book, totally by the pattern, you're, there's no way you could do this without the pattern. So <laughs> I'm just saying. But this is kind of how I organized everything. Um, I'm going to need black and gray for the background or black, white, and gray, depending on which one it is. I put what it was, what I needed for solid colors. Then, um, okay, so I'm going to need eight butterflies. But each butterfly has four different colors in it so you need a light a semi-light a medium and a dark and i'm going to need eight of them so i need a red an orange a yellowy green a green a green blue dark blah, blah, blah. so that's how i organized it so i can go through here and see like oh here's a dark blue that's what i want to use i'm going to color coat them with each other see if i like them next to each other see where they are on the quilt and then I'm going to put them in these bags. Hopefully this is a good enough size and I could fit all of them. If not, so I just put bunny and I need eight of them. The bunnies are rather solid. I might use, this is really chaotic, a little less chaotic, but I might use depending on like, okay. So if I needed to do a pink bunny, like, yes, this has a pattern on it, but I could use this. The bunnies seem to be more solids. The foxes seem to be pretty solid. They can have a little pattern, but you don't have the so many different colors. So this is what I'm going to try to do right now, and let's see how it goes. So we're here today at so much fun in Gastonia off of uh, Cox Road, and we're gonna check out the goodies. So this is my haul from yesterday. I went, I got a whole bunch of fat quarters and I went to a more personalized store. Got some, look at that. So pretty. Reds, I love this. How pretty is that? So I got these. There's another different kind of red in here. I got a lot of the yellows for the honeycomb one. And then I'm also gonna use some of them in here. So I got, a little more than um, a quarter of these. So yesterday, I have all of them in the bags. They're ready to go. Those are the thistles. The thistles had two each. And uh, this is the butterflies. I still have to add a little bit to that. I still have to do like the hedgehogs and the rabbits and the foxes and things like that. But this is a good start. And I got the black, white, and then this gray background. I was struggling with what shade of gray. Um, these are more rich colors, more earthy kind of tones. So I got a darker gray. Um, the pattern originally comes with a, with a medium. 
and all they had was the darker or the super, super light. You could barely tell that it was gray, and I thought this medium to dark would definitely um, pop these colors a little bit more. So going for more on earthy, not so bright tones, um, I believe. You know, it's forest. I believe more earthy tones would be better. I bought this about two years ago, and this has been like my, you know when you buy a dress that's too tight for you, and you're like, I'm gonna work out and I'm gonna do it. This has been my version in pattern form. So I bought this about a year and a half, two years ago, and I was like, someday I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna do that quilt. So we're starting it now. I have, um, my coloring's gonna be slightly different. I didn't buy like the kit of fabric that you can buy. I have so many, I've, I'm a collector of fabric. I have too much fabric. So I went through what I had. I have my own color chart. So it'd be like bunny, and then I need all these colors. And um, anyway, so, and then I put them into baggies to help keep them organized. And um, yeah, so that's simple. So I'm gonna start with the simpler ones first. The foxes, the foxes and the bunnies are just one solid color. The rest, you, um, they build up. So the thistle is two colors. And then it gets to like the owls and everything. And I think it gets more complicated. Um, the owl is three different colors and three, three, and then the butterflies four. So you're making them, but you're also color coding them. So I'm going to make a red butterfly, an orange butterfly, a blue, blue, a green, blue, a green, you know, anyway, so you have the spectrum. So I'm going to start off with the solid ones first and then I'll make all of them. Since I have the fabric already out um, and I've already kind of color coded the fabric, I put things next to each other. The You also need black and white for like their eyes and their nose features. And then I picked a darker gray for the background. So I have all of those and I'm gonna start cutting out, wish me luck, I'm gonna start cutting out the bunnies. I think if I were you, you might wanna do the foxes first. Although I don't have all the material for the foxes, I went to, um, I could not find my rotary cutter today. I looked everywhere for it. I woke up early thinking I was gonna start this project, like, like I'm gonna get up early and start it. And then I went outside and I was outside like cleaning my backyard and um, I'm in the middle of trying to, when we bought our house, our backyard was like a jungle and we've been slowly getting through it. And now there's, um, I kind of took my property in sections and I'm working in right behind. We just finished remodeling the deck. And now I want to, the woods behind the deck, I want to clear out. I've been working on that. It's supposed to rain all weekend. Of course, my sister has the kids this, um, she's going to have a sleepover. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get all this work done. Not happening. So um, I'm probably going to be sewing all weekend since I don't have the kitties around to stop me and bother me and ask me 300 questions and ask me, um, can I have a snack 300 times? So I can actually get some stuff done. So um, start with the foxes, I would, and then move on to the bunnies and then the thistles and then more and more complicated. I think the owls are complicated and the butterflies are very complicated. Um, and the hedgehog, so so, he looks slightly complicated, but he's only two, three, he's only three colors. So, um, start with the foxes, go on to the bunnies, that's what we're doing today. All right, guys, so I'm going to uh, give you a few helpful hints but you need to buy the pattern. Obviously, this isn't the type of quilt that you can get without buying the pattern. I'm just going to say that again. I'm going to put the link down below for the pattern. She has so many cute ones. Um, but if you're working on this, I'm going to give you um, a few helpful hints or insights, but I'm not going to give away any of her like words of wisdom, but you totally need. So really cute idea. So each page, each two pages, whatever, of the book is what it looks like, how to cut it, and then how to piece it together. Very, I like her descriptions. Obviously it looks super complicated. It's all geometric, like most quilts. Um, we're working on the bunny. So it says, obviously read everything like two or three times before you start. And it says, um, this is how you set up your fat quarters. And then if you don't, if you're just using scrap, which I'm using both. So when I am using scrap, it gives the dimensions over here which is so helpful 
Super helpful, love that. Gives you exactly what you need when you are working with scrap, or if you have a fat quarter, it shows you exactly how to cut it. That's super helpful, and how to piece it together. Super, super helpful. So all you need, obviously, your cutter, your board, your measurements, your fabric for the actual face, then you need your black and white for the nose, the cheeks, the ears, that kind of thing. And then your black background. I always just have scissors around. They're just helpful. Um, my own color chart, so I know. And then um, your tool. I've noticed this when we did the unicorn one. You might want to get a um, fabric pencil that's white and a fabric pencil that's black, especially since we're doing a lot of different color fabrics. Um, you need to mark these things like crazy. So it has two P's on it and then three L's, two J's. Um, I always put like one P, two P. The thing that Megan and I had a problem with is we were on the same table, both making a pillow in two different colors. But what got really complicated about that is you're like, oh, they're two different colors, Jen, how hard was it? But we have the same color background the unicorn is mostly white, so that kind of stuff we screwed up. Megan had to recut a few um, just because she lost them in amongst everything. Um, and then there was black for like the nose and she cut like 15 of those. So um, always mark them. And if there's two of one initial, put one, two, P, two P, one P. Um, and that just helps you stay organized because with a quilt like this, how many complicated pieces there are, you need to stay organized. So, I just got done finishing the bunnies. I cut everything out. I probably did three different sessions about two, two hours. Um, you know, all it's a lot of measuring and um, cutting. So I did the colors in one shot, the black and white in another shot, and then the gray. The gray takes the longest amount of time. Obviously it's the background and there's so many geometric shapes it takes a long time to do that. So um, I finally have them all cut out. They're all in little baggies and then I have them in a larger bag. So I just labeled it bunny. Everything I need to sew the bunny is in here. These are some extras, so I'm gonna throw them. And then I have a big bag. So I'll throw them all in here. I'm gonna probably done with cutting today, um, but then the next I'll go on to all the other different animals, the hedgehog, the thistle. I'll probably do the thistle next um, because it's only three colors. I'm gonna start with the lowest amount of cutting first and then move on. Things like the butterfly, there's, when it comes to the colors, there's four different kinds. There's two, three for the hedgehog. So I'm probably gonna do the, the littlest amount of cutting first and then move on. Um, the fox only has one color in it, but you have, you have 16, 16 of them, so that's a lot of cutting. So I'll put them in here and then maybe I'll con Megan or mom to help me um, sew them. So if you want to see more sewing and see how this, how this quilt comes along, then like, subscribe, and then I'll put the link down below on um, the Fancy Forest quilt and the pattern so maybe you can sew along with me. And then uh, I'll do more videos and show you how this is all coming along.